Witko, the show that brings you man-on-the-street interviews, celebrity guests, and groundbreaking research. Our show is also known as everything you've always wanted to know about dentistry, but we're too numb to ask. I'm General Dentist Dr. Brian Kubitko, and thank you for joining me today. The following views and opinions do not necessarily reflect those of this station, its staff, management, or parent company. To hear a replay of this show or one of the other great shows that previously aired, log on to dentallyspeaking.com or iTunes, keywords Dr. Kabitko or Dentally Speaking. Listeners should not use Dr. Kabitko's comments and advice in place of an actual dental exam. Brighten your life with a smile that shows the professional touch of Dr. Kabitko. Time now for Dentally Speaking with Dr. Kabitko to discuss your dental issues. Now, here's your host, Dr. Kavitko. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Dentally Speaking. Thank you so much for joining me. It's going to be a great day. It's always a great day. Today is episode 386. And uh, if you want to watch the show, go to ustreamtv.com, scroll all the way to the bottom, click on the little word watch, and then type in Dentally Speaking to the search bar and you can watch. All right. Now, before we get started, I'd like to ask you to help me secure volunteer dentists and dental hygienists for our fifth annual Dentistry from the Heart event, which, by the way, is also a health fair. It's going to take place this June 12th, and we need dentists and we need dental hygienists. Now, we are getting some more people to come forward and say, yes, they're going to help, but it's still not enough. So if you've been thinking about helping or you have a friend or a family member that is a dentist or is a dental hygienist, and by the way, we need dental assistance as well, uh, please please have them call 262-9588 and tell my staff that you're interested in helping, okay? Uh, folks, will get two hours of free CE. We'll give you food. We'll give you a drink. You'll have a great time, and you'll do a lot of good. Okay, that would be awesome if you would do that. Today, we are going to talk about amber teething necklaces. What are they? Do they work? Is there science behind the claims? All right? So let's just kind of start with I. I uh, this is... Been, I've been made aware of this relatively recently, and I was kind of surprised by the claims that are being made about these things. So I'm going to read you a little bit of uh, an article uh, in favor of these uh, teething necklaces, amber teething necklaces, and then we're going to talk a little bit about is there any scientific basis to it and whatnot, okay? So, oh, and by the way, it's, they're called teething bracelets, so, uh, so let me just uh, talk about teething first. Let's talk about teething. So, what is teething? Simply put, teething occurs when a tooth nears completion of its journey into the oral cavity, a journey that begins early in fetal development. The tooth erupts through the gum, often preceded by a small lump. Occasionally, there can be a larger eruption cyst, and the area may appear somewhat bluish and swollen from bleeding into the tissue. But this is uncommon. The most widely accepted duration of uh, a bout of teething is roughly about an eight-day period, with tooth emergence generally felt to occur on day five. The whole process usually takes about two years with an average of one tooth emerging each month until the complement of 20 baby teeth are present. All right. So, so now we have people, and I, went, I saw online, you can buy these uh, teething, amber teething bracelets or, or necklaces, I'm sorry. So here's what those people say. Once an infant cuts teeth, it can be a painful process for infants and parents alike with remedies including everything from clean wet wash rags to pain relief pills. One of the oldest methods available is an amber teething necklace, which the infant wears around their neck, uh, and it helps relieve the pain associated with teething. That's what they say anyway. These necklaces are designed and custom made for babies, and all they have to do is wear it on their skin to diminish the pain and comfort caused by teething. Again, this is the people that are purporting this. They're saying that an appropriate length of teething necklaces is, is, is like 12 inches to ensure that majority of children... Um, they should be able to fit in their, they shouldn't be able to fit in their mouth. It's funny because this article I'm, I'm uh, referencing uh, goes on to say that uh, it causes it has a natural analgesic when worn on the skin, releases healing oils that help the baby and young children stay calm and more relaxed throughout teething. And that amber necklaces are a great natural remedy and can eliminate the need for over-the-counter drugs. It says there are some versions of the amber teething necklace that aren't meant to be worn by the child. Um, because uh, because you'd have to be careful about that. If the necklaces were to be worn by babies, the child should only wear it when being supervised, never while sleeping, and the clasp would have to be a breakaway clasp to prevent any sort of accidental pulling or choking. So, obviously, they're, they're even saying it's dangerous for the child to wear 
And in fact, in one of the articles I was looking at, it says the mom should wear it and have the baby's skin touch the mom's skin. But the same article goes on to talk about how you, and they even show pictures of the babies wearing them. So that's not good because the babies can choke on them. And uh, they're kind of like, um, what am I trying to say? They're, they're kind of refuting their own information. Now, um, it, okay, let's talk about this. The Baltic Amber Teething Necklace has been designed to ensure the safety of your child by nodding before and after each bead. So in the event that the necklace does break, it will break. Um, it, only one bead will come off, and the remaining beads will stay intact. They say the clasp is made from an amber plastic with a plastic screw mechanism. The clasp is uh, laboratory tested, blah, 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 uh, which ensures the highest safety. Funny that it would be tested by a laboratory, just the clasp. Unlike traditional clasps used on children's necklaces, such as a parrot clasp and ring, which don't release, these rely on these do release. Okay. Now, and then they go on to talk about if it wasn't enough that they look gorgeous, great for both boys and girls, young and old. Uh, they have lo five lovely warm colors, butterscotch, honey, cognac, cherry, and malte to choose from. It says every necklace is unique with tiny air bubbles and unnatural particles within the amber itself. So they're really, you know, promoting these things, making them sound like uh, they're really cool and they're fashionable and, and that they're going to do a lot of things for us. Now, here's how they think they work, they being the people that propose them, okay? They say in the 1930s and 40s, European biochemists discovered that succinic acid, which is an amino acid created naturally in every cell of the body, capable of aerobic respiration, participating in citric acid or Krebs cycle, and this is how carbohydrates, fats, and proteins are metabolized into energy. That wearing an amber, uh, wearing amber may also protect us against the negative influences of electrical equipment like computers, televisions, mobile phone, and microwave ovens. I've got to stop there. That's ridiculous. <laughs> I want to make sure people know that I'm just reading an article that I found purporting the use of these bracelets. I am not saying that this is the uh, that this stuff really works. Uh, let's talk about some science. Um, that um, talks about that. And um, so there's a website called scienceornot.net. This is where I uh, got this information. And um, we're going to talk about these claims. And um, so, okay. One claim is it allows the body to heal itself, radiates soothing energy, and absorbs negative energy, thus needs needs cleansing often, calms nerves, stimulates intellect, aligns ethereal and physical, physical energies, cleanses the environment, success, uh, success in treating disorders of the kidney and the bladder. I think that's crazy. <laughs> I don't think it can do that. <laughs> and the same with, it says amber teething beads work. This claim that amber teething beads work on a simple theory of mild magnetism, which has been found to have the potential to reduce mild pain, such as a company's teething. Uh, okay, that's kind of ridiculous too. Not kind of, that is. Okay, now, uh, many promoters do suggest a plausible mechanism. They claim that amber contains an analgesic substance called succinic acid, and we just talked about that, which is released by the beads in response to the warmth of the child's body and absorbed through the skin. There are lots of red flags there. The appeals, there are appeals to ancient wisdom and esoteric energy, magical thinking, use of anecdotal evidence, empty edicts, and... Um, pseudoscientific jargon. So, obviously I was suspicious that the promotion of these necklaces would rely heavily on nonsense about the magical properties of crystals, but most of the sites uh, out there uh, base their claims on the succinic acid mechanism, so it deserves to be checked. So, does amber contain succinic acid? Yes. Is it released by warmth and absorbed by the body? Mm, not so much. I mean, think about it. Um, if so, does it have any physiological effects? Is there any scientific evidence that these beads work? The feeling is, is that they must be, there must be solid evidence for the effectiveness to justify the risk of choking and strangulation, right? So in the search for evidence, uh, we, got, uh, we got off to a great start and found a posting by Septicon, which gave a lot of references and analyzed the situation very impressively. But couldn't just take their word. We had to find primary source. So... I realize we're up against a break, but actually, because this is going to be part of Dr. Kavikko's question of the day, we're going to go just a little bit long. So, um, Baltic Amber um, does contain succinic acid. Other types may not. However, there's no evidence that Baltic Amber releases succinic acid at body temperatures. Succinic acid melts at 187 degrees centigrade, 
but is mo moderately soluble in water. So if it is seeping out of the amber, it couldn't be in molten form. It couldn't, you know, you can't melt it at body temperature, uh, which is 37 degrees Celsius, by the way. So, but there is a possibility it could be dis dissolved by sweat. And um, so basically, you know, as you can tell, I'm skeptical and I'm trying to find, I mean, if this was based in science, I would be telling you, but I haven't been able to find any scientific evidence that this really works. So I want you to remember for Dr. Kavikos question of the day that the amber uh, teething necklaces, they don't prevent ill effects of microwave and phones and all that kind of thing. And, and uh, they're not based in science. The use of these teething devices is not based in scientific evidence. Okay. So, uh, but let's go ahead and do Dr. Kafiko's question of the day. But for, before we do, we'd like you to listen to this. This station will not be held liable for any contesting during Dentally Speaking with Dr. Kavitko. Participation in the contest allows Dr. Kavitko to record and broadcast your name and call. One winner per household, prizes are non-transferable, cannot be substituted, and are subject to taxes and fees. This station cannot be responsible for the inability to enter the contest, whether due to equipment malfunction or telephone difficulties. All decisions of Dr. Kavitko concerning this contest or eligibility Eligibility are final. And now it's time for Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. All right, and let me remind folks that the winner is going to receive free flowers from Vice Number Florist. They'll be delivered to your place of business this Tuesday afternoon. And Dr. Kavitko's question of the day is, true or false, there is science-based evidence that amber teething necklaces protect babies against the pain of teething and the negative influences, the negative influences of electrical equipment like computers, televisions, mobile phones, and microwaves. All right, the winner receives free flowers. The number to call, 459-9769, 459-9769. So go ahead and call now. Stay tuned to Dentally Speaking with Dr. Kavitko. At Dr. Kavitko & Associates, a lot of people ask us if we're accepting new patients. They know we've been in business for 34 years and assume we're not. Well, guess what? They're wrong. We do accept new patients. After all, if we're doing our job correctly, we get our patients healthy, so all they need are routine exams, cleanings, and the occasional filling or two. That leaves us free to take care of you. So yes, we do take new patients, and we would love to take care of you, your family, and your friends. Give us a call at 614-262-9588 or go to drkavitko.com. When it comes to the overall health of your teeth, trust the experience of Dr. Kavitko & Associates. From dental cleanings and exams to restoration, dental implants, and pediatric care, Dr. Kavitko & Associates can give you something to smile about. There's a lot of places out there that offer discount dentistry, but at Dr. Kavitko's, he actually takes the time. See what Dr. Kavitko & Associates can do for you. Conveniently located on High Street in Clintonville, call 262-9588 or online at drkavitko.com. Estás escuchando Dental Speaking con Dr. Kavitko aquí en su estación favorita. All right, we're back. We're doing Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. Today's question was... True or false, there is science-based evidence that amber teething necklaces protect babies against the pain of teething and the negative influences of electrical equipment like computers, televisions, mobile phones, and microwaves. And we have Mike on the line with us. Hi, Mike. How are you? Hey, how are you doing? I'm well. I'm well. Thank you for listening, first of all, and thank you for calling. Do you have the answer? Of course it's false. It is false, yes. Did you Have you heard of this before? Uh, actually, no. I'm just listening to your program now. Okay. You're, yeah. you're educating me? Well, thanks. Yeah, I, I am educating you. This is crazy stuff, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree with you. <laughs> All right. Hey, Mike, what do you do for a living? I always ask folks. Um, I'm a data analyst. A data analyst. Okay, well, analyze this. This is false. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, stay on the line because we have to get the information on where to send those flowers from Vice Timber Florist, okay? All right. Okay, have a great day and tune in you, next week, too. 
You too. I appreciate it. Thanks. Bye bye now. Okay, so let's get back to our uh, topic, which is amber teething necklaces are purported to eliminate the pain and everything caused by teething. Now, you know, historically, uh, the history of teething is a great example of kind of the extreme degree of absurdity that conclusions based on pre-scientific approach to illness often result in. So right up there with, you know, humors and home homeopathy, early philosophers like Hippocrates attributed a wide variety of minor symptoms such as itching gums and loose stools to teething. And many of these still make the current list. But because of our once poor understanding of human physiology, infants were felt to be extremely vulnerable to any derangements in their nervous system and more serious outcomes were attributed to the eruption of teeth, including death. Yep, death. <laughs> as crazy as this sounds, it actually isn't that hard to understand why it is, was believed for at least a couple of thousand years that teeth could result in serious illness and even death. Remember how frequently a tooth emerges, which was once a month on average, for, for about two years in early childhood. People attributed serious illness and death to teething for the same reasons that some people continue to blame autism on vaccines. Which, by the way, I just heard that, uh, you know how Jenny McCarthy was kind of leading the anti-vaccinate movement because she claimed that her son uh, had autism because he was vaccinated. Well, turns out her son doesn't even have autism. He has some other rare disease that uh, they now understand and have treatments for. Uh, and uh, the best of my knowledge, she hasn't gone on national TV and said I was wrong. So I hope she does. But all those people that got measles not that long ago because they weren't vaccinated, uh, we can thank folks like that for that. So, Jenny, we need you to go on the air and tell everybody uh, what you now know. Okay, so now... Um, so until the advancements of scientific medicine, such as vaccines, for instance, children frequently died or suffered through a variety of common ailments during the same period of time that they were teething. And of course, the true cause of these afflictions was unknown, so it became widely accepted that teething was a source of fever, diarrhea, vomiting, seizures, tetanus, and meningitis, to name just a few, and even death. It was not uncommon for teething to be listed as the cause of death in children prior to the late 19th century. Unfortunately, many of these children probably died as a result of the misguided attempts at treating the perceived, perceived symptoms of teething. So it's really unfortunate. I mean, I don't know if people realize, but it, you know, it wasn't that long ago people died on a regular basis from just the common flu, just the flu. People would die. So we have to kind of take these things with a grain of salt and keep in mind that you can buy this stuff on Amazon. You can buy it in some uh, uh, drugstores. It's, uh, I mean, they're just there to make money. You know, all they want to do is make money. And if you believe that it's going to uh, make your, pain, your uh, child's pain go away from teething, then they're going to let you believe that, and they're going to take your money happily. <laughs> so anyway, okay, now, <clears throat> I'm going to talk a little bit more on the pro side from the people that are, that are claiming that this stuff is wonderful, that these things work so well, uh, because... Um, I don't know, it's just, it's, um, for me, it's hard to understand how this stuff comes about, but on the other hand, um, it's out there, so we need to deal with it. And I don't want to be like a Dr. Oz who is kind of, you know, in favor of all this stuff when I'm not, and uh, uh, it seems like there are, for every show where Dr. Oz is saying that something is good for you, there's another show where he's saying it's bad for you. And I think people are starting to call him on it. I know the ADA used to uh, have him on their website as kind of a resource. And about I think about this time last year, they took it off because they realized that, that he was, uh, you know, promoting stuff that had no scientific evidence to promote. So anyway, um, yeah, probably... Uh, I was going to say if we would go to a break, but uh, I see my producer still taking information from Mike, so we'll we'll go on with this. <clears throat> okay, so um, they have a disclaimer. It says this is real jewelry, should be treated just like a string of pearls, should not be worn by an infant or a child unsupervised, and should not be gummed or mouthed by the wearer. When in fact it's in a baby, they're going to gum it, they're going to put it in their mouth. And so it's kind of a, it's funny, it's just like I was talking about Dr. Oz saying, do this and then don't do this. This, uh, this, this uh, uh, website promoting the sale of these says, first it says the mother should wear it, then it says babies can wear it, but then it says babies shouldn't suck on it or, you know, it's just, uh, it's just crazy. So I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and uh, go to a break. I'm Dr. Kavitko, this is Stanley speaking, and we'll be right back.
This is Clark Kellogg. Stay tuned for more of Dentally Speaking with Dr. Kavitko. Uh, vous écoutez à la radio du dentiste avec Dr. Kavitko ici sur votre radio préférée. Here at Dr. Kavitko and Associates, we are intensely dedicated to providing the absolute best dental care. The word mediocre isn't in our vocabulary. We just won't take shortcuts. Isn't that what you want in the person you trust with sharp objects in your mouth? Of course it is. However, people tend to assume high quality means expensive. But guess what? We're more affordable than you think. Our fees are about the same as one of those chains. But with us, you get our 34 years of experience and our unwavering commitment to quality. Discover for yourself. Call us at 614-262-9588. Hi, I'm Dominique Rigert. Like what you hear? Why not use the Dentally Speaking Show to promote your product or service by becoming a sponsor? Call 614-262-9588 to learn how. That's 614-262-9588. Call now or send an email to Dr. Kavitko at AOL.com. When it comes to the overall health of your teeth, trust the experience of Dr. Kavitko and Associates. From dental cleanings and exams to restoration, dental implants, and pediatric care, Dr. Kavitko and Associates can give you something to smile about. There's a lot of places out there that offer discount dentistry, but at Dr. Kavitko's, he actually takes the time. See what Dr. Kavitko and Associates can do for you. Conveniently located on High Street in Clintonville, call 262-9588 or online at drkavitko.com. I'm Grandpa, and I go to Dr. Kavitko, and I still have all my teeth. Real ones. Where's my glasses? And we're back. I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is Dentally Speaking. Good morning, everyone. I hope you're all having a great day, getting your day started. Uh, What we are doing today is talking about amber teething necklaces, whether they're fact or fiction, whether they work or not. But before we get back to that topic, again, let me remind folks, we are having our Dentistry from the Heart event. It will be June 12th from 7 a.m. until 4 p.m. What that is, is everyone can come and receive uh, free dental care. It's a, a filling, an extraction, or a cleaning. We will have hopefully about 120 volunteers. We also have the OSU Mobile Dental Coach. They will be treating children. We have the Mount Carmel Mobile Healthcare Van. They will be uh, doing uh, medical assessments for people. They have a doctor right on site. We will have the Ohio Benefit Bank, so you can get yourself signed up for uh, social services that you may have coming but didn't realize it. We'll have a DJ, Craftworks Karaoke. Uh, we will have food and drink and games and porta potties and just all kinds of stuff. The Rolling Studio will be there. And we will be using it as triage for the Mount Carmel Mobile Healthcare Van. Oh, and one more thing. If you're not in need of dental care, but you know someone who is, send them. But if you're not in need, we are also having a blood drive. There will be a blood drive right at the event, June 12th from 4 and 12. I'm sorry, they're not going to be there the whole day. I think they'll set up about 8 or 9. But uh, please come by and donate blood because we want to do as much good as we can in the day that we've set aside for this. All right? All right, so as I mentioned, we're talking about teething and how there's a movement out there where people think the amber uh, teething bracelets or necklaces uh, work. Let's talk about teething in the present. So we've come a long way in our understanding of human physiology since the 19th century, but there remains a widespread misunderstanding of what symptoms can reasonably be attributed to teething. Parents and other caregivers are quick to list fever, difficulty sleeping, fussiness, uh, drooling, changes in feeding amount and frequency, nasal congestion and diarrhea, in addition to the most frequently cited symptom of pain, but the evidence has not been very supportive of these beliefs. To put, to put it bluntly, it does not appear that the eruption of a tooth can be successfully predicted by any collection of symptoms. So, experts do not believe that any symptomatic symptom, or I'm sorry, yeah, any symptomatic symptom can be caused by the teething process. This includes poor appetite, congestion, difficulty sleeping, diarrhea, vomiting, cough, rash, or fever. At most, there may be some discomfort that goes along with the teething process. As with colic, a significant factor is the variability or fit of the parent-child diet. The same child may be perceived as being more or less symptomatic or not symptomatic at all, depending on which caregiver is observing them. Many new parents are exposed to misinformation regarding what to expect from teething, and it is likely that, at least in some instances, it is a self-fulfilling prophecy of sorts. I was looking at kind of a, 
a give and take where you know where you read an article and then people comment on it. And there was this woman that was convinced that teething, uh, or that these bre bre <laughs> these necklaces were. I keep wanting to call it a bracelet. Uh, that these necklaces work. And she was saying, I'm tired of talking to people who have already made up their mind and, and I know I'm not going to change their mind. And, and of course, she was the one that was uh, thinking that they work. So you have, to, you have to go by science, folks. I mean, it has to be tested. And that's why I was kind of making a comment about how the, they were testing in a laboratory the clasp on these necklaces, but not using any testing on the, bra on the necklaces themselves. Go figure. Why is that? It just seems like... Uh, everything should be tested, right? I mean, we test um, seat cushions in a car. They have a machine that just pushes up and down thousands of times to simulate getting in and out of a car to see if their seat is going to wear out too soon. So, all right. So, and that leads me to my Why in the World segment uh, of the show. And in this, this, this time, it's Why in the World Would Somebody Use a Product or Believe Information About a Product or service for that matter, that hasn't been scientifically tested. Now, just so you know, I mean, I have a son that's a PhD researcher. He's a scientist. I, we learned a lot about statistics and uh, the kind of uh, uh, research that has to go into every product that we use in the mouth, all of the dental materials, all of the liquids, all of the anesthetic. Everything is tested scientifically to know it works. So would you want me to inject a liquid in your mouth and say, well, that's going to take away your pain if no one had tested it? in a lab or on somebody else, you know, or on a rat or a mice or however that testing is done? I think the answer is no. You know, really, when you come to a dental office, you know that everything I'm using has been scientifically tested. You know, if I, if I put that uh, anywhere, it could be the x-ray. Yes, we've tested the x-ray. We know how, many, how much uh, radiation you're getting. We know what it's equating to. We know all of that. So why would you let uh, somebody on the Internet uh, kind of twist your arm into using something that wasn't tested. So I just don't get that. You have to do research. And not only just research, you have to do thorough research. It has to be double-blind tests, which means the researcher doesn't know what's being tested and the subjects don't know what's being tested. Did you know that? The people that are uh, like uh, taking a tablet or using a rinse, they don't know what's being tested. And then what they do is they don't even tell the scientific researcher what's being tested so that they can't put any bias into their findings, all right? And that's the only way to do this, people. That's the only way. So your first question ought to be, um, has it been scientifically tested? Is it science-based? And by the way, with an amber, an amber necklace, I'm not saying it's bad for the child. It probably, it, it probably just does nothing. It probably just does nothing. Uh, unless they're choking on it, being choked by it. Uh, it's in their mouth. Uh, you know what I mean? So you do have to be careful about that. Okay, now, remember, you can follow me on Twitter. It's at Dr. Kavitko. And if you would go to my office Facebook page and like us, it's Dr. Kavitko and Associates. That would be absolutely wonderful. We appreciate that. If you have comments about the show or you have suggestions for future topics, we would love to hear from you. You can send those to Dr. Kavitko at drkavitko.com. Or you can send them to drkavitko at gmail.com. We've not really asked for suggestions for topics uh, in a long, long time. And so uh, we'd be open to that if you'd like to, uh, uh, like to send us your, your, your thoughts. And um, also, uh, just so you know, um, uh, remember one last time, one last time, we need more dentists, we need more dental hygienists, and we need more assistants, okay? And if, you don't, if you're none of those and you want to come out and help us at our event, Please do. It's a, it's a wonderful event. You'll be fulfilled. I guarantee it. All right. So it looks like we are about out of time. And uh, I guess, yeah. So don't forget to tune in next Sunday and every Sunday here on your favorite station. Goodbye. Before we leave, let me tell y'all a little something. Before we leave, let me tell y'all a little something. Go. This is Carly Red from Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, the hit show on VH1.
urging you to tune in next week for another exciting episode of Dentally Speaking with my dentist, Dr. Kavitko. If you're interested in learning more about this and other dental health topics, go to dentallyspeaking.com to access full episodes of Dr. Kavitko's show. If you would like to book Dr. Kavitko to speak at your next event, please call 614-262-9588. That's 614-262-9588. Or send an email to drkavitko at dentallyspeaking.com. That's D-R-K-V-I-T-K-O at dentallyspeaking.com. WSNY and WSNY HD Columbus. The opinions expressed in this program are solely those of the advertiser and do not reflect the opinions of this broadcast entity.